typically your customer here? Are you, is this, uh, uh, you know, people that operate fleets, individuals? Uh, it's mostly individuals. We are starting to pick up fleet customers as well. We do a lot of, you know, individuals will show up, of course, you know, they're driving their Prius five years, eight years, no issues. And then all of a sudden, they have all the, the Christmas tree, it was like for the triangle of death. Yeah. They'll show up to Toyota <laughs> or they'll show up to their mechanic. Yeah. And they'll scan the vehicle, find out it's a bad battery. They'll get a quote for the price, which they're like, there has to be a better way. Yeah. And, or a cheaper way. And then they'll contact us. And most of our business is consumer, uh, directed to the consumer. And what makes us so unique is that we're able to come out to you without you having to come out to us. And with all the locations, we offer mobile installation to 85% of the country. Yep. So what 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 kind of training do uh, you know do you do your crews have to go through to to do this? And what typically how long does I mean I've actually participated in a couple of projects where we went in and we pulled the packs out and, and put them back in. So I have a sense of what's there, but maybe tell people what what all's involved in in that. How much time are they going to have to take and that type of thing. Well, I like to I like to make the metaphor. Uh, our our techs, we you know we do this on a daily basis. It's almost like for them, it, the how we how some people spend a lot of time behind a computer, and they can type really fast or you know sixty words per minute. That's the same way our techs are with batteries. On average, we can get them replaced under an hour, and that's okay. because the second gen Toyota Prius is because we do it so often, right? And we you know we'll have our techs replace them once a week or you know twice a week and they go through rigorous training we have all of our training is done in-house by us we have our own you know protocols our own guidelines set up to where that they have to follow a specific way you have to disassemble the car in a specific way and that way you're just going to reverse it and assemble in a specific way that way a no parts are missed and everything is done correctly to standard so that way the customer does not uh inquire any damages to the vehicle from us replacing the hybrid battery. Okay, so in under an hour, uh, how long does it take for a thief to remove one? Uh, <laughs> well, they're not, they're not there to replace it. They're no. there to get it to harvest the cells. And I would say, uh, and they're targeting the third generation Priuses is the main target oh, right now. Oh, okay. Why, why the third and not the, just simply because they're going to be newer cells or what? Yes, newer cells and the third generation has less bolts. Ah, so, okay. The second generation vehicle has a total of 22 bolts fastening it to the frame. It's like 22 or 26, I'm not sure about the exact number. But on a third generation, it has six bolts. Ah, okay. And that's, you know, if, if somebody that has experience in it, who my, you know, someone who's stealing these, of course, you know, is working on a, you know, wrecking yard, making, you know, close to minimum wage, tearing apart cars. And like, right. well, it takes me, I can get this done in 15 minutes and sell it for $1,000 on Craigslist or sell the sales on eBay and make some money. It's hard to track them, but there are serial numbers on the cells and on the battery itself that's coming from Toyota. Okay, so if I if I my car is registered obviously with Toyota, presumably those numbers are somewhere in Toyota's system that I could call up yeah. Toyota and say, "Hey, Vin, my car VIN number da 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 was just ripped off of its its pack." Um, they could provide me with those numbers then. Yes, they have. There's a there's a a serial number on the battery itself, and then each individual cell is stamped with a serial number. And the only way you would remove that serial number is if it's um, you'd have to pretty much damage the cell. That way, you know, if it does get stolen, there there's ways of tracking it. And I'm sure t I'm not I haven't seen anything about it, but I'm sure since Toyota's experienced thefts in the hybrid batteries, they're taking measures to be proactively uh, finding ways to make it more accessible to people that, you know, if it's been stolen versus something that's, you know, oh, it's somewhere, that there's a database somewhere, we don't know, making it more relevant to people to access it. Right, okay. So if somebody wants to buy 
these battery because they, for whatever, they've got a home project they want to do. They could conceivably, uh, this would obviously, you'd have to work with uh, with Toyota, go in, they bought some cells, they could check the numbers to find out if those cells have been stolen or if they're legitimate, then I gather. Yes, and, and that's where the, a lot of the controversy starts because, well, I bought this battery off of eBay, installed into my vehicle, vehicle's been wrecked, I bought it off of some, you know, there's just right. so many change of hands that can happen right. before, you know, the original to where it's at. And the the hard part about it is it's like, okay, how, how am I going to verify? That's the biggest problem that, you know, you can call the Toyota, the 800 number, but they won't give you that information now just because you've called in and asked about yeah. it. Yeah. So, so you guys have come up, I gather, with a solution for these third generation Prius, which is the 2010 to 2015 car, um, that makes it much more difficult, I gather, for people to come and steal the battery. So talk a little bit about that. Okay, so the individual who is stealing the battery knows what they're doing. This is not, I'm going to go wake up one morning, I'm going to go steal these batteries. They clearly have disassembled the Prius before. I have personally have witnessed uh, the installation of the bolts from stolen hybrid batteries. And everything's taken apart. Like there's, there, there are some broken pieces in the vehicle, but everything's taken apart as, you know, they most likely have power tools with them and it's two right. individuals working. So they already know that they're going to need the necessary tools to take it apart, and it's just tools that you can have in your pockets. What we're trying to do is we have these, you know, these security bolts proprietary to us. And the reason we do that is because we don't want to buy just off-the-shelf security bolts, which anybody can find tools for. So, you know, yeah. if you go, you break into one priest, you see these security bolts, like, okay, next time I'll bring this tool with me. And right. then, you know, if they have a handful of security tools, they'll be able to, instead of 20 minutes, they'll take them 30 minutes or right. five. And that's for some times for them, that's still doable. But we're trying to do to where it's difficult for them to, when they get there, they realize, oh, I can't remove this. And instead of them trying to remove the battery, they just r run off. Okay. Because the possibility of removing it will take them will will exceed the reward that they'll get from removing it. Yeah. So, th do they typically do this theft in somebody's garage, or do they steal the car from a parking lot and then take it someplace where they can do their mischief and then you know skedaddle, so to speak? Well, it's it's mostly cars parked on the outside, so in the streets, in the alleys, somewhere where it's not well lit. Okay. So it's just they're, they're trying in front. They've even done it in front yards. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So what they do is they'll go out there and they'll you know I'm sure they have somebody driving. I don't know how exactly it happens, but I'm sure they go out and they find Priuses. They try to, they look at the perfect time. I mean, if they're doing it and there's multiple, you know, thefts about it, then there's, they're, they have a system figured out. Yeah. But, you know, what we're trying to do is prevent, is to not only install these bolts just to help keep hybrids on the road, but when we do install them, and let's say if the customer gets the window broken into, they tear the car apart, they see these bolts like, oh man. It's going to have them start thinking twice of breaking into vehicles and saying, right. well, I can break into this vehicle and has these bolts. It's, I can't do anything about it. Yeah. To go to the next hybrid and has it again. So it's just it's a, it's a deterrent more than anything. Yeah. Now, is this something that you do in a – let's say I've got a, a, a 2012 Prius and I'm a little concerned about the, you know, the neighborhood and things like that. I would – contact you guys and you would come out for some fee. I'm in Dallas, right? Yes. And you would come out for a fee and replace the old bolts and put the new the new secure bolts in then. Yes, that is correct. So what we do is our, our fee for installing the bolts at in shop at, at location is $100. That's for okay. us to take the car apart, re remove your bolts, put the other bolts in. Uh, and it's it's about the same amount of time as replacing the hybrid battery, but without physically having to remove the right. battery, if that right. makes sense. 
And we also offer a mobile installation fee, which is uh, an additional 150 So it would be 250 for us to come out to you. Okay. And I normally recommend four bolts, and they're $25 a bolt for us to, you know, to install them into the vehicle. That oh, way, so you don't have to replace all of them, just enough no, to make no, it? No, no, because okay. you're, all you're doing is you're fastening the battery down to the frame. Right. So when they do break in, they're like, oh, man, I can't do anything with this yeah. car, and they just leave. Yeah, okay. And what we're trying to do is we're we're trying to inform people and we're trying because of course the thieves they're gonna be out there and they're gonna be like okay there's people actually trying to do it and hopefully the number of thefts go down and that way you know not everybody has to install these bolts I mean it's not like something I'm telling them I'm just in, giving people an option and a peace of mind that they can sleep better at night when they wake up their hybrid battery will still be there now can there be is there a place do you have like a little vinyl sticker that goes on the window that says this car protected by green tech security bolts or something like I, that I, I am in the process of getting some stickers done that okay. way people will they will even they'll see like okay they won't they won't do they won't you know break in and we're we're trying to figure out which window which which ones are being broken into and just slap it on there so they can see. Yeah, yeah. But that way it can even just be prevented from from the car. I mean, how how big a problem is this? Is this like, you know, hundreds of times a week or what? Do you have any idea? I would say I've I've had um We've had about four or five people, con prior to us launching these bolts, okay. we had about four or five people contact us about the, um, about their batteries being stolen. Okay. And then I've noticed, I've, we had, there's a news story that went out in San Francisco about the hybrid batteries being stolen. And then one of the gentleman, I, I can't recall his name, but he mentioned that when he went to the, to get his car replaced, car, to the car uh, the auto shop, he said that the, the, the shop had about two or three more ba uh, cars with the same issue. And then um, there's also one of our a shop and not our shop specifically, but it is someone that deals with hybrid batteries. Yeah. They've also experienced these batteries being stolen. And a lot of the green cities, like cities that are very, you know, um, very proactive about the green lifestyle, right? As in San Francisco, Bay Area, Seattle, right. that's where they're experiencing it because Priuses are everywhere. Yeah. So yeah. they can just drive down the street. Oh, this one looks like it's parked under a tree in a dark area. Let's go hit it. Let's go hit it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, so what happens to the? Let's come back. Come back to the subject of the cells that you reject. Mm -hmm. what, how do you recycle those? What happens to those? We, we, we have people who contact us for after usage. So let's, because the battery is monitored by an ECU and there's, you know, if the computer for, to, tells us that the batteries are good and not good. Right. And the ones that we reject, we find alternative uses for. So they can be used as batteries for other, not vehicles, but people do like do-it-yourself projects. Right. And we also have ways that we recycle them to where they're completely finished. We also have alternative ways of recycling them for the nickel that's in the batteries itself. Okay, and is that uh, what? You just get a big truckload of them and take them to, yeah. uh, somewhere? Yes, we have we have uh, recyclers that we deal with, and we just wait till we pile up and we get a good number of them, and then we recycle them. Um, we've had people who try to you know do solar projects and just stuff like, hey, you guys got any extra cells? I'm like, yeah, you know, we don't mind helping people out. Right. Sell yeah. and it's and it's we we sell it for the same amount that we recycle them for. Yeah. So t what would that typically be? If I wanted to, I've got a project. I want to put solar on my house. I want to experiment. What would I pay you for those? It's, it's all depend. It, they're running a few few dollars a cell, but it's all okay. a matter of the 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 hours you need to run and every you know it's it's all the fact that people call. Oh, I'm trying to run a electricity on a boat, or I'm trying to do this. Right. I want to you know six or eight or twenty, and it's like okay, you know we we'll have our engineers talk to them about it. The one you know I'm not I know of it, but I'm not too familiar with that subject. Okay. So all right, I, cool. I actually do have a project that I would like to talk to you about sometime. 
but not during this. We'll do that at another time. So Sounds good. Very cool. So where do you guys go from here? You've got 11 stores. You've got about 85% of the country covered. What? How soon do you have 100% covered, and how many stores do you think that'll be? Um, we shops. So. Yeah, we we want we want to have it to where we're directly to you know, you call us. Hey, my battery's bad. I need a replacement. Okay, we can get it to you in two days. Either a we install it, we ship it, or we go out to you. That's our focus is to be there, and that way you know because these batteries do fail. These cars do have issues. We don't want the our customers to be stranded without a vehicle for you know a week or two weeks waiting for shipping that back and forth. That's why we're expanding. Um, we're done for the year for opening stores. Okay. But we will we will be hitting all the major cities. We you know we plan on expanding to Atlanta, uh, Nashville. Um, let's see where else we're trying to do. The Arizona, that you know, areas like areas where there's a high concentration of hybrids. Right. We also want to have a Portland, Oregon. We want to have a location in uh, New York, New Jersey. Right. Have more in uh, Texas. Open up two more in San Antonio, Houston. That way we can bring the almost as you know, anytime there's an issue with the hybrid battery, or you know, people move. You know, I had a customer the other day who, you know, called in and said, hey, I moved from, she lived in Austin, but moved to Chicago, and she sold her vehicle, and they were right. like, hey, I want to re-change uh, the ownership to and update our side. I'm like, okay. And because she moved, the, the customer she was selling the vehicle to, she was saying, hey, you know, you can still have, you still have a warranty if anything would go wrong, they have a shop here. Right, so that's right. just, you know, that's the comfort that people can experience versus having, oh, well, they're all the way in Texas, so if a battery fails, you're two weeks without a car. Right, right. And you said you have a, sh a place in Chicago? Or you have yes. Or not? Oh, you do. Okay, good. Yes. All right, cool. Well, Dan, thank you so much for uh, sharing all this information with us, and uh, I'll pick up this thread with you at another time. I've got a project that I would love to chat with you about. So Sounds we'll, good. Yeah, we'll talk to you later. So thanks a lot. Thank you for having me on. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.